Name Princess can fun there are no, I, haven't, I have yet to encounter a fly i scared them away with my my hoodoo your hoodoo my hoodoo hi welcome to modern art blitz i'm your host matt gleason we are going to do for an hour what art history couldn't do for you in ten thousand years and that is entertain you <laughs> <laughs> my co-host today is the lovely and quasi delectable Lisa Quasi. Derrick. Quasi. <laughs> Quasi. You, you eat those words. I meant that in their fantasy, you're delectable. They, ha they have to earn it. You're not just delectable for That's anybody. That's right. They have to earn it. And okay. I do not get taken for granted. There you go. You I'm take just, me for a ride, but you can't you're... take me for granted. Okay, well. Mm -hmm. Test drive. So, um, <laughs> Lisa and I have two wonderful guests two today. Two handsome and wonderful guests. Well, they're handsome to you. <laughs> For me, they're just the bros. In the light blue suit. Dapper. I feel like I'm doing a wrestling match here. In the light blue suit. Dapper. Weighing 106 pounds. The dapper. The dapper. The elegant. The elegant. The art dealer of the 21st century, Greg Escalante. Gregorio Escalante. Greg of the Gregorio Escalante Gallery. Greg, how you doing? Great. Welcome <clears throat> to Modern Art Blitz. Uh, with joining Greg on our show is the artist who is currently showing at the Gregorio Escalante Gallery. Uh, you may know him from the Book of Life. I know him as my next door neighbor for the next month. Jorge Gutierrez. Welcome, welcome to Modern Art Blitz. Hi. Thank you, and, guys. And you too, Greg. Oh, I can't really. Greg, oh. you, you've been oh. a. Oh, oh, <laughs> back, 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 back. This is amazing. <laughs> All right. So, tell us about uh, Jorge. Tell us about the last time you were on TV before Modern Art Blitz, which is live at five every Sunday on Dronebox. Dronebox.com. I, I was, uh, we were promoting Book of Life, this is in 2014, and they put me in a Telemundo morning cooking show. Wow. With all these, you know, very voluptuous uh, hosts in the morning, and okay. they had me cook uh, mole. And wow. uh, it was kind of a disaster, but it was the magic <laughs> of TV. Do, do you have a mole recipe to share? I, I have no idea. You don't cook? No. No? What were you doing on a cooking show? That was just, the, that's how they get guests to do it? Honestly, I think it was the fantasy of uh, Hispanic women to have men who know how to cook. That's every Hispanic woman's yeah. fantasy. Yeah, and so they were like, pretend you can pretend you can cook because it'll boost the ratings. Yeah. So did you did you toast the spices? It was like they had me do this, and then they would cut the close-ups, and it was like different guy hands, <laughs> <laughs> like much handsomer and manlier hands. Nobody's walked up on the street and said, "Those aren't your yeah, hands." Yeah, so I, I I felt used, but, <laughs> but it was good. But you made the women happy. They were they were very happy. The chicks, they're, 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 and they're still making your mole. And <laughs> 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 so, so you currently have a show at the Gregorio Escalante Gallery, yeah. and um, uh, and it's my first show ever, your first big solo show. Yeah. And uh, Greg, how did you discover Jorge? I was on the plane coming back from Spain, and I looked over at what my girlfriend was watching on the screen, and it was this fantastic animation that was blowing my mind. And as I'm watching it more and more, I go, "What is that thing?" And she goes, "That's." The Book of Life, Guillermo del Toro produced that, that movie. And I just go, wow. And then I just kept watching it. So then I turned it on mine and I listened to it and I watched the whole thing all the way through it. And I go, 
I can't believe that this got made because it's so edgy for kids and it's so what I like that it can't be real almost. So then I Googled who the guy was that created it, wrote it, directed it, and his name was Jorge Gutierrez. So in that, I, I think I found something on lynda.com of a video of him and his wife painting in their studio in the valley. And I go, these guys are like artists. I want to give that guy a show. But I didn't know him. I didn't know anybody that knew him. I, I had never heard of that movie. So then, as I was talking to my friend Obi Wade, who did the She's Out program, and he said he knew Jorge, and I only had to ask him like three or four times, and finally he gave me his <laughs> number, and I called him, and then he, we hit it off, and then the show happened. Wow. So, had you ever heard of Greg Escalante? Well, I mean, Juxtapose and, and I had gone to his other gallery, so I kind of knew. You kind of knew who he was. I knew who he was. Him, so and so when you, you were happy a, to get the call? When you get a call from Greg, it's you get like, like it's Don Corleone calling. Yeah, we got, yeah, I got an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> and, and he charmed me in a way that originally it was going to be why don't we show some of your old paintings? Uh -huh. And then that somehow turned into, what if you do like five new paintings? Ah. And then I think the phone call ended with nine new paintings. And uh, how many are in there now? And 57. 57, 57 paintings. paintings. So it's, it's Greg's. And how long uh, did it take you to? Uh, it, was, uh, it was something that I was doing. Um, so you know, obviously working on an animation during the day, I would go home, put my kid to sleep and, and hang out with him. And then for three to four hours every night, I would paint. And whatever I was painting, you know, if it was a, for example, a Magic Johnson painting, I would watch a documentary on the Lakers and I would paint. So I ended up doing that 57 times and roughly, uh, wow. I would paint on nine paintings at a time. I had painted a mural. And so I gave myself all these rules. I will only use the paint left over for the mural. And if I run out of paint, I can't use that color anymore. Wow. So everybody talking about the, the limited palette in the show, that, that was... That's what limited the palette. That's what limited wow, the that palette. Is, so how many episodes of the A-Team did you watch from it for Senior T? <laughs> I watched uh, Rocky three, three, ah. three times in a row. So, wow. so you're, so and you're, one in Italian. So, you, so <laughs> one of the things you're specializing in is, is you're making Mexican paintings of pop culture, yeah. international pop culture. Inter right? Yeah, you, mostly American and Japanese, which is the stuff that Mexico sort of because of the Pacific Rim. Yeah, and, and, and to some extent, the thing I love about it is all these uh, shysters and, and sort of bootleg guys take all this culture and sell it back to Americans. Mm -hmm. They sell it back to Americans. So it's like, you dumped the Simpsons on us, well, we're gonna sell you Bart Sanchez. Bart Sanchez. Yeah. You've done a painting of Bart Sanchez. Who, who's the painting here of? Uh, that's uh, the big one, Mickey Mouse. That's the big one. That's, that's uh, Muerto the... Mouse. So, so, and, and you got the skull and crossbones there. Is, yeah. is, that, is, that, is that what Disney's doing to international pop culture? Well, you know, I, 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 I'm, I made a movie about Day of the Dead, and to some extent it was thanks to Disney, because Disney wanted to do a Day of the Dead movie, or, and they're doing one. And so that told all the other studios, you should do, you should do a Day of the Dead movie. movie because and, 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 and were you already working on a Day of the Dead movie in your mind when this happened? How, yeah, how did, you I mean, get, how did you get a movie deal? Uh, I've been trying to make it since I went to school, since CalArts. When I graduated, it was my dream to do a, a Day of the Dead movie. And everybody told me, at every studio, pretty much the same thing. You're just some dumb kid out of school. No one wants to see a movie about dead Mexicans. And it's just too creepy Whoa, for little kids. But, okay. For other kids. Yeah. It's not creepy enough for, for Mexican <laughs> kids. Oh, that, that'll be fine with it. But that's I don't a think that market. audience even. But counts. I mean, did they not look at at the demographics and the population shift in the United States, let alone in California? Well, this is four, fourteen years ago. Fourteen this is years 2000. ago. Right. So, so now but, you are absolutely so, right. So, so your all, timing was perfect. I, my my people love each other so much. They had so many babies that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, rooting for them. <laughs> so, so as I recall, Disney actually got, they kind of got bad press because they yeah. tried to trademark the phrase Day of the Dead. And everything associated. And everything associated. Oh, with sugar culture. skulls. Sugar yeah. skulls. So that's it's, like someone, you know. And that, that just gave them bad press because people were saying you can't yeah. codify our holiday. Yeah. Right? And, and our culture. And yeah. something that's 2,000 years old. Yeah. yeah. And More so, than. so, so the trademark is does not exist. No, it, it's, it's but, impossible. But, but you know, that that was the that was the whistle to the other studios for you. Like, yeah. did, did you get the call then? Yeah, it's like the the at that point, uh, this movie originally was at DreamWorks and it didn't quite work out. Then uh, it went to another studio, which is where I ended up making it called Real Effects. And then Guillermo del Toro got involved as a producer. Okay. And then that helped me get it into Fox, and then Fox. And, it was a studio that co-founded. And having, so having him behind it was really the, the deciding factor? Well, at first I thought having him behind it, that was it. It was going to be easy, right? Because he's such a big director. 
And it, it was just as hard because the theme is not exactly, you know, Minions or, or Princess movie. It's a, it's a movie about uh, sort of things that are a little more complicated. A little, little more brutal. Yeah. And yet kids, kids can take it, right? They're not uh, wimps. To me, it was whether parents like it or not, the reality of the math of families is kids, uh, you know, their grandparents pass away. And yeah. so they have contact with someone leaving a lot sooner than any parent is ready for. And so the movie deals with all that stuff. Wow, it's, it, and it's it, as heavy as it is, it's, it is part of life. It's the book of life, right? Well, Mexico uh, specifically has a relationship with death that is very unique. And so we have it in all our art and we have it in a way that is very festive. Uh, by having death all around you, it's a reminder that you should enjoy life. And the way we talk about death, especially when someone passes away, compared to what I see in the US and in other countries is, you talk about people who passed away in a happy way and remember all the good things they did. In the United States, we just deny that it ever happened. Well, people don't talk about it. They just don't. They it's like, just, oh, oh, he's gone now. Yeah. Maybe he's on a vacation. And so the core of Day of the Dead, as beautiful as the visuals and the, and the sort of iconography is, it's the message that's amazing, right? Day of the Dead is all about, as long as we talk about those who are not here, as long as we tell their stories, uh, sing their songs, cook their favorite dishes, they're alive. So, so Greg, and you, you're familiar with the Day of the Dead before you, you, you met Jorge, right? Yeah. Have you ever <clears throat> celebrated Day of the Dead? Has anyone's death ever made you happy? <laughs> Those are two different questions, really. But like yeah, that. some people's death really made me happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the first I mean, one was this guy that died at age 18 named Jim Lyle from my high school. Yeah, because he was the biggest bully at the bowling alley and it would just like push you away and take your games and then on new year's he was doing a wheelie on his motorcycle and fell off and died so, <laughs> wow. i would celebrate that one wow I don't know if that's how it works that's but i mean that, 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 that works? it would also work in that people would go like well, you know what a dumbass he did not they would take advantage of they, his life yeah. yeah never forget that kid so it doesn't yeah. happen oh, to so you. they use it as an example yeah and, and if somebody had lived a great life, they would use it as an example. Well, that was basically in cemeteries what they tell you. Like, what are you going to do so that when you're gone, we all talk about you? Ah. And if you don't do anything, that's the worst you can do. Besides a wheelie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, we'll always remember that kid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Celebrate the tragedy. So who are we looking at here? Uh, so Charles Bronson. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Bronson. Uh, my grandfather... Uh, <laughs> He had the four Death Wish movies in English, and he didn't speak English, and he would just have me put them on for him, and he thought they were like Charlie Chaplin comedies. So as Charles <laughs> Bronson is shooting all these guys, he would laugh and laugh, wow. and he was like, these films are hilarious. And wow. so, dedicated to my grandfather. Okay, so is there a tradition in Mexico of doing this kind of art, of like El Bronson? Is this, is this Yeah, you take whatever the thing is, and you make it... Mexican. You make it a little more Mexican. Yeah. You know what I miss so much in Tijuana now are the velvet paintings. There's still some, but they're all those guys really are passing hard to away. Find. I know. I. It's just. What's it's up with now? There's a there's a there's a velvet painting yeah. museum in, in right around Chinatown, Chinatown. correct? Yeah. So, Velveteria. So the Velveteria, right? Yeah. So uh, Greg, you you've you've actually thrown party. Greg, you're the only guy I know that owns a gallery, and then you throw a party at someone else's gallery. That's that's you well, know. Well, Chinatown, <clears throat> I think is like kind of one big gallery or community ah. and I think the Velveteria is like a treasure of Chinatown so Chinatown and all the galleries would be less if he went out of business and left so I want to support him because it just makes the whole thing cooler because that that's a treasure we like our black velvet paintings that's yeah. true that's true so so um so how long uh well I, how old are you uh, 41. You're 41, and you've been making art your whole life. Where you're the kid who could draw. Yeah, I'm the kid who painted, and then at some point noticed all the other kids weren't painting anymore. Ah. And I, I just thought everybody did that. You never lost a sense of play. Yeah. And so, and but obviously, you know, uh, going through, uh, did you go through different styles to arrive at what we? I want to call it your mature <laughs> style. Some people might call it your immature style, but uh, have you always painted like this? I kind of uh, because I come from animation. It's all about draftsmanship and all about sort of. Uh, making things technically correct. When I paint, I try to paint the motion and I try to paint sort of what I remember as a kid, things I liked. So I, I tried to sort of let go of all the technical stuff. And all my favorite, you know, my Basquiat, sort of my favorite painter. So I liked that childlike quality in, in his stuff and that naive sort of 
lowbrow thing. I'm, that's, I'm that's worried happening. that you missed out on the best thing about art school, which is the life drawing class. Well, I, I was a you terrible did. life drawer. Oh, really? Uh, I would always stylize the models, and, and well, they, they and, seemed and to like did, it, but the teachers hated it. The, the, the models loved it, yeah, because the te- the you didn't make them look lumpy, but the, but the, yeah. teacher, the teachers are... And I, you know, if it was a male model, I, I would give him giant penises. Like, I, I would do stuff to try to set <laughs> I up. like the plural there. You give, <laughs> you give him giant penises. Wow. Wait, I have question about current animation because I still remember like people would draw each cell and then like the cells got shipped out to China for lots of them yeah to draw. And they still and so, do but so your your stuff is not compute you just you don't draw it and then it's digitized or how does it all well, work? We, we still draw but now we draw on Cintiqs on digital sort of screens and then they build the CG models but I mean we still storyboard everything is drawn so there's still lots of drawing That's but great. the final thing is basically digital puppets so you draw it, and then they can you can move that drawing digitally within well, you, within reason, and then you have to draw some other versions of it. Yeah, like you'll design a character, you know, a regular drawing, and then someone will model it, really, like literally build a model and a puppet, put skeleton underneath, and then they animate that. Hey, hey, Greg, have you ever sold digital art? It's it's a t- I, as it's a, tough. I, it's a, it, digital art is very tough, but I'm looking at you as the salesman that might be able to crack the nut. Uh, <clears throat> I like a lot of digital art. But, um, and I, I mean, the closest thing I sold was the Ransman Mitchell that I think they do something digital, but they do a, a way more amount of set building and creating these crazy photos. That's the Empress of Chinatown that you see right. in our kitchen. Oh. Uh, I mean, that's but kind selling of, like a thumbnail, a thumb yes. drive. Yeah, I mean. a thumb drive or a CD-ROM. A thumbnail. Oh, or a, a, no. Do they still have CD-ROMs? No. Did they get rid of ROM? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, DVDs. Yeah, well, Matt's, you're still trying to sell, sell stuff on floppy disks. So. I, I, <laughs> I got an eight-inch floppy disk for you. <laughs> so, but even even like this art show, I found myself like I would doodle with pencil, take a picture of it with my phone, and then bring that into Photoshop or a paint program, do a color rough, print that out on paper, dip it on coffee or something to get rid of the super bright colors, and then use that as a color. Sort of guide. Wow. So Dip it in coffee to get rid of the bright color. You're, kind of, you're giving away the trade secret. Just to make it look like... I, okay, like, I think like, somebody owes Cal Arts like $5,000 <laughs> to, to learn that secret. Jeez, you're, just, you're running out. You're, you're, you're spilling all the beans. There. Okay, so what, what, is, uh, what, what is this one? So that's... Uh, uh, so, okay. Ah, Sufrida. So Frida and Sufrida means cool. she suffered. Oh, she suffered. Oh, yeah. suffered. Think, think and, and obviously Mexico is a very Catholic uh, country. And so she's our patron saint of all artists. And the idea being that the more you suffer, the more your art is worth. So, so, so far, your story, I, can you give us some examples of your suffering? Uh, well, you know, I, I, my wife, I, I, uh, when I met her, my pitch to her was we met at a punk rock concert in Tijuana, and I immediately fell in love. It was like a movie. And my pitch to her was, if you marry me, we'll be the Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo of cartoons. Wow. I'm going to get super met- fat and, and a train's going to run over you. <laughs> <laughs> you met your now wife at a punk rock concert and proposed to her immediately? Uh, two weeks after that day I proposed, she, she like, like a... And she smart, accepted? No, like a smart woman. She said, no. Okay. And so we dated and dated. Not romantic, but, but logical. And then eventually I got into CalArts and I was like, you know what? I love you so much. I'm not going. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in Tijuana and, and, okay. and leave, live the Mexican bohemian life. And like a smart Mexican woman, she said, if you don't go to CalArts, I'm going to break up with you. Okay. Oh. But then you upped the ante and said, well, you got to marry me then if I'm going to go to CalArts. Well, that was still the debate. And so I would go to, go to school and then every two weeks drive down to Tijuana to meet her. Meet okay. her. And so I, lo- I crossed that border maybe a thousand times. So you're working on your end of the bargain. You've gotten a little closer to Diego. Here. I, I'm now, working. I'm she, working on it. Has your wife gotten hit by the train yet? Not yet. <laughs> she doesn't need to. She doesn't need to. That's all. You know, I just wanted to say that we often tell people not to wear green on this show for a reason. And if we could, and I just wish you, maybe we, you can stand up and show people how deeply inside you your art is. You're wearing a shirt with green on it. And see there, woo! The green screen just, yeah, isn't that amazing? We so, shoot on a green screen here at Modern Art that Blitz. Looks like, that looks like your movie. And yeah. Jorge's kind of, you've, you've broken the illusion. And I, now, is I, that, did you design the t-shirt? 
A friend from CalArts did it. A friend from CalArts. Martin who, Ontiveros. Martin Ontiveros. That is pretty cool. So, 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 um, so, Greg, how many times have you given shows to people whose art you saw on a plane? That's the only one. <laughs> this is the first time. Is this a new trend in art? New, it worked with him. I <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, I've seen a lot of movies on planes, and really, yours is the only one I would offer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's not too many. <laughs> yeah. So, so when the, the film initially came out in uh, 2014, October and, 2014, and and it's it already did it did it how did it run in the theaters and all that? Was uh, it the gross was it a big gross? It made altogether a hundred million dollars. <laughs> Can't which argue with that. In animation, it's not as much as they would what? like. What? That's not a lot. That well, you know, it's Frozen like made a billion dollars, so. Yeah, but Frozen sucked, and your movie was good. <laughs> yeah, and no one from Frozen you... got an art show with Greg. Yeah, wait, now, wait, do you, now do you get in trouble, like, if you start bad-mouth another animators? Well, I, I have friends with lots of people who worked on Frozen, so... I, oh, see, so you kind of... You, I, I can say Frozen sucked, You can say, sucked, it, you can say you whatever can. you want. Okay, well, is there any animation out there that's just not, you're not happy with out there? Like, are there any problems in animation that need to be addressed? Uh, well, the big one in the U.S. is this belief that it's for children where ah. in other parts of the world, it's for everybody. It's for everybody. Right. And in the US, you know, Family Guy, Simpsons, these are primetime shows that adults are watching, and oh, South yeah. Park, and, but still the belief is that it's a, it's a, it's in a the movie, movie industry. In the least. movie industry is that it's for kids. But yeah, Bugs Bunny, when those show, those animation ran before movies, and if you watch the original Warner Brothers, um, animation, there's like all these subtexts of and course. references that are very mature and very adult. That's how I first saw like Humphrey Bogart and, and yeah. Was, oh yeah, yeah. And the Saturday morning, yeah. or the Saturday, the Saturday, the, 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 the cartoons, the afternoon cartoons yeah. that were on all the time were the ones from the 40s, you yeah. know. Yeah, the big problem is Hollywood sees animation as a genre as opposed to a medium. As a medium, exactly. Wow. Okay. So, so you, ran, you 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 were in the theaters. DVD. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you on Netflix or do you know? Uh, no, not on Netflix. Uh -oh. Because if you get the Netflix, that means they can't sell the Blu-rays anymore. Because that means everybody who's going to buy one has it. Oh, really? And so it's wow. really good that it's not on Netflix. Because they, they're still selling. They're, the, still, they're selling. still selling the DVDs. Yeah. Oh, so that's kind of like a little insider oh, okay. info. Yeah, and I think there's like this residual money that's being made from the DVDs. Yeah. that's pretty good. It's, yeah. it's uh, well, when the movie came out, unfortunately, it was the most illegally downloaded movie in Latin America. Oh, no. Well, well congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when they told me, I was like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's, um, what is the difference between making, like, price-wise, an animation, like, the, the actual, co like, below the line cost, not like the... Just people. Right, Lots but the number of people. Yeah, it was right. like so 400 people working on the movie. On an animation. Yeah. 400 animators? Yeah. Wow. Wow. And, but for well, a technical music, like it's. Right. It's a now, did now did you did you weren't on a set though? Were you all just kind of all home working at the same time? Uh, well, there were studios, and you know the music we did in England, and and most of the voices were recorded here in LA. Like you just travel a lot. And with the um, with the voices, did they have? the voices cast and you kind of worked with the characters of the actors to sort of, you know. Yeah, uh, we have cameras when we record them. Like after the script is done, then we start casting and I had like my dream uh, cast and pretty much almost all of them said yes. Wow. Uh, and then you, you record them doing all the lines with cameras and then you give that to the animators for reference, but then they animate. Because you try to add the actors characteristics because yeah. wow. they're a big star and you got to kind of and usually actors act with their faces whereas voice mm -hmm. actors are used to just using their voice uh -huh. and so for movies you tend to use a lot of live action actors. Li live action actors so so who was your favorite to work with uh i, I know it sounds crazy but i i loved working with uh ice cube was was one of really? my favorite uh, fun to hang out with yeah he and he was just and he just had to drive up the street right because he lives he's yeah and, and he you know he brought his wife i mean it was really <laughs> fun he oh, yeah. it was it was really cool and um, but this was your first feature film? Yes. So you were completely new to this, and did you have people kind of explaining it to you and hand-holding you and guiding you through the process? Uh, a little bit. I mean, before the movie, I had a TV show on Nickelodeon, so I kind of knew. And what was the TV show? It was called El Tigre, The Adventures of Manny Rivera, which was sort of the first Latino superhero. But it didn't do very well anywhere where Donald Trump is doing really well. 
Oh, so the, de- the, the, the demographics are a pre- a, an electoral yeah, predictive. I could have predicted uh, yeah, yeah. certain states. Really? Same thing with the Book of Life. Wow, really? Yeah, so what's, what states are going are gonna, to... Are gonna... Uh, East Coast and West Coast and Southwest love Book of Life. Everything in the middle. Everything in the middle doesn't no like Book of Life? Nobody, yeah. Iowa, you're not getting any... any no, no, no love. No, down, no illegal downloads no, in Missouri. I don't think Republicans are into Book of Life. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, we live in interesting times oh, when yeah. an animated film can elect a president. Yeah, when, when they would test it, they would give us letters, and a lot of times, you know, they would say, like, why would I want to see a movie about my gardener? Whoa! Whoa! And, Whoa. Like, oh, no. and then turn it around, and then, you know, Chatsworth. I was wow. like, I would think it was somewhere else, and it was California. Oh, it was like, <laughs> but the valley <laughs> yeah. is nearby. Wow, yeah, that's yeah, kind yeah. of, that's, that almost makes wow, me wow, cry. Wow. That's really fucked up. So, so who are we looking at here? Uh, so, when I would cross the border, which show you, I would watch these classic Looney Tune cartoons. Mm-hmm. And there was a time where, early 90s, they decided to make Bugs Bunny look like a hip hop guy. And they would <laughs> sell all these Bugs Bunny hip, like Tweety Bird with a cab behind. And wow. You mean, all... you mean like just car- people would draw cartoons of them? Yeah, or? like Warner Brothers store would sell these characters. With, with hip hop par- w- paraphernalia. Yeah. And then the border people said, well, we have lots of cholos. We need to do the Cholo version of the Looney Tune character. Wow. Oh my God, I wish I had one of those. And see, I mean, it was, it was so ridiculous. So this, this is your Cholo Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Wow. wow. What's up, Cholo? What's up, Cholo? Where's the carrot? No, no carrot. <laughs> He's got a joint instead of a carrot. No. Oy, 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 oy. And you know, there's Tupac Shakur, Thug Life tattoo. And there's no problem that you were with Fox and this is Warner Brothers. You're not going to I, I, I worked. I worked at Warner, Sony, Nickelodeon, Disney. I've worked for all these studios. So is I it, feel is like, that the animation way you're yeah. just going to... So I feel like I earned the right to, uh, the, oh to do God. a loving tribute to the bootlegs of those characters. Wow. Wow, I'm a little I'm a little worried about uh, the the Thug Life uh, Tweety Bird now that I've seen the I've seen the. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this seems like a whole sub show. You've got 57 of these pictures, yeah, that's and they're a lot. from all all walks of life. There's the rule was it had to be something I saw being sold at the border. Something. Wow, so you, you saw. have rules. I kind of like. So, like strict. for example, Morrissey is huge in the Latin community, but I've never saw any Morrissey stuff sold in the border. So. I, Are you a Morrissey fan? Of course, it's in my what's DNA. Your favorite, what's your favorite Smiths album? Uh, Louder Than Bombs. Louder Than Bombs? That's yeah. the greatest hits though, that's an easy one, I, right? I, 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 you ask. Ask. <laughs> what's your favorite song? What's, what's your, your favorite song? Uh, let's see, my favorite song... Uh, oh, you're, I can't stump Sweet you Hayd. on. No. Huh? Sweet Hayd? Well, that's a Morrissey that's song. A Morrissey song. That's one of your Smith three song. favorite songs. One of my three favorite songs. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I like Death of a Disco Dance. Death of a Disco Dance. Sing it. You want to sing? You want no. To sing? <laughs> I don't want you to sing. Please, Matt, don't sing. Yeah, is it true you were fired? You were expelled from choir? Choir? Choir. Uh, I've been kicked out of a lot of things. <laughs> as, a, as a side note, my brother is in, supposed to be the most popular Smiths Morrissey tribute band. Your brother is in the most popular yeah. Smiths Morrissey tribute band. What is the name of the band? The Sweet and Tender Hooligans. The su- your brother is, what is it? Is he Morrissey? No, he, no, that's Jose Maldonado <laughs> is the Mexican Morrissey. The Mexican Morrissey. Oh my gosh. Wow. Have you, have you Where ever are seen they him? playing? Will you let me I know when not. they play? They play all the time. They play oh all the God. time? We're going we're gonna to Google Sweet tender hooligans there's yeah. a there's a place in boa heights where they do morrissey karaoke night and you have to sing in spanish and there's no letters so you're judged by wow so you gotta know and do people do people oh yeah they go, they go all oh no out. no people go all out when it's morrissey they go all out yeah. so where do you put morrissey in the pantheon oh i at the top he, yeah he, he's to me he's mexican he's mexican but he doesn't. Don't <laughs> make him cry but, at Morrissey shows. They rush the stage. But and he they doesn't cry. eat carnitas. It's okay. It's he, okay. He's a saint. We he's forgive a saint. him. You we forgive him? him? Okay. It just means more carnitas for the rest exactly. of us. For the rest of us. He's saving it for he's us. He's saving it. Man, what a sacrifice. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you love Morrissey, but you had rules in organizing the show. You have 57 paintings, and they all had to be things that you saw at the border. Being sold. No, being G- sold. Greg, did you get any of these rules ahead of time? Did he tell no, you these rules? No. no. Is this news to you? Yeah. yeah. You, didn't, you didn't know about the, if I ran out of this color, I can't use it again. I'm only using the colors that I can bring home from the mural. You yeah, knew none know of that. these so, rules. So, so what, what, I saying, knew, what I knew is the paintings were going to be $4,000 each uh-huh. when there was just going to be nine of them. Uh-huh. It, it, that was up from like three or something, right. and then then all of a sudden, he got the fever, bro, and there was 
going to be 30. That was like his big, I think I can get 30 done by the thing. And we then, we and like then the fever. Up to, and then when he had so many, he just goes, shit. 2,000. Make him 2,000. Yeah. No, but and the Bowie one is awesome. As soon as I saw that, I go, that one's selling, and boom, red dot. Yeah. The show's selling well? Yeah, there's 30 paintings of the 57 sold so far. Wow. wow. It's so, been up, like, not even a week. So, so I, think, uh, I think Gregorio Escalante Gallery is going to be buying a big ad in the next issue of Coagula Art Journal Print Edition, don't you? <laughs> yes, the ad deadline is August 15th. <laughs> we got a plug in there. All right. Yeah, can, I love you it. You can find us on Facebook. Who, who, who are we looking at here? Okay, so that's El Chapulín Colorado, which means the red cricket. Mm -hmm. So for anyone who's watches The Simpsons, the B guy in The Simpsons is based on him. And it's a dopey Mexican superhero that would come out in all these TV shows. And I always, as a kid, hated him because I thought, well, the Americans get Spider Man and Batman, and we get El oh, Chapulín. We, we get the superhero. red grasshopper. <laughs> and he was like a middle aged guy who was like, hey, everybody. You know, so it was terrible. But as I grew older, I realized, wait a second, his superpower is his heart. Oh. And he charms people into not doing bad things. And arguably, that might be the best painting, design-wise. In your opinion? Yeah, because it's so pleasant to look at. It's, you know, it's like the... All the curves yeah. and the smiley face. Yeah, just, oh. Or do you just like red crickets? I don't know. I just think it's... Grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> but so, it was puzzling to me because I never... I didn't know anything about that one. Like Champollion, I don't know. But you and they sell enjoy, them. They sell them in the border. Enjoy the pan. Yeah. They, they sell the red cricket yeah. paraphernalia. And next to the Simpsons B guy, so it's like. Oh, oh. To, to remind you, hey, yeah. we got this one, but we we got this, the original. Our knockoff is a little better. Yeah. yeah. So so the, the crickets at the border. Morrissey's not at the border. What's the, what's the craziest thing you ever saw at the border? The the craziest thing they have at the border are, and no one's been able to explain it to me. It's a monkey surfing with a cigar. A monkey surfing with a cigar. Is it Greg, like a Paul Frank knockoff? No, no, because this is from the 40s. Greg, and they have these surround. You've seen them. I'm you're sure. a surfer, Greg. Yeah, is there I, any I, I more? never saw them until the 80s, I think. Yeah. Oh. But I mean, I was going to Tijuana since the 60s. But and I've always asked yeah. all the people yeah, who sell them, and they, no that. one knows the story. Yeah, I don't know it either, but it's popular. People like it. Are they are they made into banks? Yeah, or they're ceramic, ceramic banks. banks. Yeah. yeah, they're banks. They're monkeys. Yeah. The monkey's smoking a cigar, and he's on a surfboard yeah. catching a wave. And he looks like he's not really into surfing. Yeah. Is he wearing he a shirt? less about the fact like that he's someone surfing. put him there. He's more into the cigar yeah. than he is in surfing. And it's something that would just, I don't know, like if Jeff Koons has like done that one yet. Uh -huh. But that would be... It's yeah. ripe for his yeah. picking. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is the monkey wearing surfing? Uh, a one, like a onesie striped yeah. old timey oh. uh swimsuit. like an old time swimsuit yeah so he, oh. he is acknowledging that he is at the beach and yeah, i and tried painting it and i just couldn't figure out like what what what, what, what i couldn't do it i couldn't do it <laughs> nobody can tell you it's not it's not the rally monkey it's not no, the planet of the apes it's, i couldn't do it at all yeah it, it stumped me what what uh well if you're stumped as an animator yeah i mean is it i mean does that does that tell us as an artist that you, you the familiar is your friend Kind of. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I just never had a connection. And as a kid, I thought, I don't understand. Why would the monkey smoke while he surf? <laughs> if he goes through the water with a cigar? A perfectly <laughs> logical question. Why? It's almost philosophical. You could get Nietzsche in on us uh, if you'd like, Lisa. Well, I, I said Nietzsche, not Peachy. Or is he that confident, <laughs> right? Is yeah. he that confident is he that, that he Or is it fun? some oh. commentary on, like, Stoner surfers, and it's encoded that the cigar might be a joint. Act, might, yeah. Yeah. And once you're stoned, you can do everything. You surf through life. Yeah, yeah. surf through life. Or you're just some dumb ape. Yeah. I always took it as, <laughs> as racism against surfers. Racism against surfers. Uh, yeah, because it was like surfers super, are it was like someone that was jealous monkeys. of surfers. Yeah, wanted exactly. Wanted to make them look bad. Oh, wanted to make surfers look bad. Like, so, bit, like, so it was like, like a criticism or a, par a, a parody in a racist way. Who, who are you making look good here? Uh, Superman. Superman. Man. Who is Superman? So, uh, I, I, obviously, I'm an immigrant. So, to me, the ultimate immigrant is Superman. Yes. Superman was not born here. He needs to be deported. He left we need a planet. wall between him and Krypton. He left his planet, came to Earth, pretended to be like us. Wow. But, but secretly helped us. And, and, that's and all the good immigrants. That's every good immigrant. <laughs> yeah. 
and that and, uh, and uh, why can't we get that story national? Why can't this Superman thing be a little more known? <laughs> well, it will be because you've got the exposure now. Do you know? Do you know that? Um, interestingly, here, this is an interesting aside of all the Andy Warhol prints um, that he ever did. The one that sells, uh, he would do a suite of ten prints, and there'd be two hundred and fifty. So um, the one that sells for the highest dollar amount is his Superman. Is Superman of all the prints he did, huh. even more than the broken up Marylands and and the soup cans that he, the prints of of, of anything he did, the Superman consistently it's up to like one hundred twenty thousand now. Wow. Last time I looked, last time I checked my stock market. I, last time you checked, had the price on all the artwork you have stashed in your closet. You know, the only thing stashed in my closet is my dog hi hiding from the firecrackers. Are in they still going my off? Neighborhood. Yeah, they're still going off. Really? Man. Yeah. Last <laughs> night, man. Boom. The minute the sun was down, they, they're le it's less and less now. So. Where do you live? <laughs> Huntington Park. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Does that you, say you, it all? You like excitement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's a fun neighborhood. Um, <laughs> so, so where do you live? Uh, I live in Dallas. You're living? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Excuse me here, but that's a long way to come to do our show. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for driving all this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a long so, drive, you guys. So, so, wait, so, so you're just in town. I just assumed you lived. You went to Cal Arts. You lived up the street. No. Uh, so, Book of Life uh, was made in Dallas. It was made in Dallas. So, Why was it made in Dallas as opposed to Hollywood? Uh, a, the studios there. Right you know, to work tax state, breaks. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Tax breaks, dollar. Okay, okay, okay. So I moved there four years ago. Okay. But we kept our place here in Burbank, and so we just. Oh, okay. So I want to say you're bi-coastal. You're kind of like mid by. Yeah. yeah. What's you're the vibe? In, what's the vibe in Dallas these days? I love it. We yeah. live in uh, Deep Ellum, which is sort of the artist community oh, there. Oh wait a minute! My favorite restaurant in the world is in Deep Ellum. With Pecan Lodge? You named it. Then. I knew. You I did my favorite restaurant oh, too. You're too? Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, see now when you do the Dallas Art Fair now. Uh, you, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. When you go, oh, yeah, let yeah. me know. I do the Dallas Art Fair every really? year. Really? It's a very good fair. Yeah, yeah. Very good fair. But I love that Pecan Lodge. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite dish there? Yeah, I think the well, I think the ribs are okay, but the brisket. The, the brisket is amazing. Oh. The brisket's amazing. The oh. beef ribs they always run out. Yeah. So I, mean, I got I finally I said I'm gonna go early and I got the beef ribs and it was like it was like, like the Flintstones. French Flintstones. Yeah, yeah, it was it was literally gonna tip tip oh, over. If you ever go to Dallas, you gotta go. Yeah, Dallas. yeah. The Pecan Lodge is great. What's I'm your second ready favorite? To fly there right now. What's your yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, What's your second favorite barbecue? Uh, I like a. Honestly, I, this place called Baker Ribs. That's not Baker's as, Ribs. That it's like a little more ghetto. A little more ghetto. But I like it. Cause Did you ever go to the one? There's one in the, I, somebody recommended that was at a truck stop, just just south just uh, just south of Dallas. Oh, I don't, yeah. I don't think there was I'm a truck stop. This guy's. You got to go there. And I went there, and it was like, yeah, this is kind of scary, but it's worth it. This is pretty amazing. Well, my favorite tacos there is a place called Tacos La Banqueta, uh -huh. and you you might die going there. And the food is. You like, mean because of the neighborhood? Well, the food, it, it, more than likely you will get sick, but that while you're getting sick, you're like, it was so worth it. So it tastes <laughs> as good coming up as it does going yes, down. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and that's how good they are. Yeah. That people wow. almost die from their food and they still come back. You know, it, Dallas is a great food town. Yeah, absolutely. It's, 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 wow, the, the you are great. making me so yeah, hungry. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go out to dinner after this. Yeah, don't totally. Worry, don't are worry. Are we gonna be going to our usual? I don't I don't know yet. So who sponsors this show, Max? Who sponsors the show? <laughs> Ling's Market in Chinatown. At Ling's, you can enjoy beer and wine. You can't enjoy them there though. You have to buy it, and it's a liquor store. Get out of here. We just took your money. And Get we out also of here. have soda. Soda pop, gourmet soda pop. Gourmet soda pop. And Pokemon characters. We do. We are. We there. I was captured. A poke. Someone took a picture of a Pokemon sitting on my shoulder. While you were working at Ling's Market. While I was working at Ling's, so I just sold them a bottle of our excellent chilled prosecco. Well, that is. And they is, found a Pokemon. That is our show sponsor. <laughs> One tried to take me off the cliff at Long Beach Art Museum last night. No way. Yeah, because it was there. They're out to kill you. Me and I was looking to try to get in it. Right on that bluff. Are you playing the Pokemon thing? Pokemon Go, yeah. My are daughter. You, are you on. playing it? This is a new thing. Okay, I was on the tr I was on the train coming back from Santa Monica, and if you go a certain speed, you can't get any Pokemon because you can't be just driving by. The kids no, are. You have on, to be walking. There's, speed. there's every kid, every single kid is on that train, and they're waiting right when the train leaves the station. It's still it, the the person looks like it's running, like you're running, and then they start picking off the Pokemon <laughs> out there. It's it's just nuts. So, so have you have you had any forays into virtual reality? 
Yeah, I'm going to be doing a virtual reality short about Mexican wrestling. So. Wow. Wow. So, and that'll be like somebody will have it on the phone? Yeah, or? somebody will have it on the phone, and then either you watch it like this or you're going to put goggles so, on. So, the studios are everybody's starting to put money into this? Yeah, like, everybody. It's the new frontier. It's, Nobody's quite figured out where it's going. How are we going to do this? How are we going to make money out of it? How yeah. are we going to entertain people? Well, and how are we going to get people to pay for it? That's well, the big question. You know. It usually starts with like... It's free, because with Pokemon, you have to buy stuff. You can buy things. You can pay to start with a Pikachu. Yep. You can pay to buy um, like well, you, extra... If you don't have any money, you can't play Pokemon you Go? You can pay, play Pokemon Go it for could, free, but if you... It accelerates it, it if you put a little dough in there. Right, exactly. Okay, They're making billions of dollars. Who, who is Super Macho here? So, uh, Super Macho is twofold. Uh, Zapata is one of the biggest heroes of the Mexican of uh, uh, Revolution, and they sell his image everywhere. So it always, it's amazing to me that, you know, there'll be these little American blonde kids with a Zapata t-shirt. A Zapata t-shirt. As if they were wearing a Superman t-shirt. So yes. it's like a living Mexican superhero. He is and, the Mexican superhero. Yeah, he, as, as a kid, it was like, I guess all our heroes are real because they're right next to Batman and Spider-Man. And he's, he's responsible for September 16th, right? Yeah. So there you go. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, the, the super macho is something my grandfather explained to me uh, when I was five years old. He said there's two types of men in Mexico. Two types of men in Mexico. Machos uh -huh. and super machos. And what's the Whoa. difference? He said a macho guy will fight everyone, but a super macho guy fights no one. Wow. It's so like this is Mexican Zen, right? So wow. Like, oh. it's amazing. You're so macho, you never have to prove it. Exactly. And he said, uh, a macho guy cheats on his wife. And again, I'm five years old, right? A super macho guy is loyal till he dies. Wow. He never cheats on his wife. So I was like, grandfather, are, are you a super macho? No. Uh -oh. <laughs> wow. Because he used to fight people. Yes. <laughs> um, so Now, can a macho ever become a super macho? Yeah, we. Uh, it, he said, uh, we are all born macho. We you're born should macho, aspire. You're, you should aspire to. Wow, these are very wise words. Yeah, these are wow. wise. Well, Matt, uh, I would have to say that you're pretty, you're super macho in many ways. Really? Yeah. Uh, I you prefer to just anyone. go back and fight. Well, no, you do fight, but you don't cheat on your wife. Oh, she'd kill me. <laughs> so, so, how do you know? Huh? Oh! I know, I, I know he doesn't cheat on his oh, wife. No, no, no. Greg, you're a single man. How's the market out there? <laughs> Greg it's is great. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so Greg, when you, uh, when you, when you were working with Jorge on the show, was placement of particular works a concern or was this, there so much great work you, did that become a problem in and of itself? Yeah, how did you guys figure out all that stuff? Was it alphabetical? It was impossible because <laughs> it was at such a high, I really think it was at such a high level. It was like, to this day, I can't really even figure out what my favorite one is because there's so many good ones. The, the, the consistency and level is so amazing. So when Wendy was trying to put all the best ones up in the, the top room, I, it wasn't working at all. I go, just take 20, start with just take 20. Don't look at them, take 20 downstairs and that's where they go. Oh, really? Oh, so, yeah, so you, yeah. you use the, the, the theory of randomness. Like, yeah, it, it, when yeah, you have enough no, good it, stuff, you don't have to yeah, worry. It wasn't working the other way. Okay. Good, and if, good, it, good. if there's like <laughs> things that seem like they go together, it was just random. So there was, it was a completely random assortment, so I, I tried to yeah, make sense yeah, of the place. She might have come back and done stuff. She might have played how around. I kind of directed it because I couldn't, it was too hard to do. Like, if you were there, you probably could have done it, but we had to do it without you. I loved it. I mean, there's some stuff in there, like if you go up the stairs to the office, there's prints. Uh, the girl from Frozen and Elvis. And so when I saw it, I'm like, this is great. A prince, a queen, and the king. Wow. wow. And then I asked, like, did you guys do that on purpose? They totally. No no, 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 no. I can, was, I can, I can vouch a lot. Happening. I can vouch a lot for the Gregorio Escalante, but they're not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> they're not that clever. Even Sma, in all her genius, there's, it, she didn't come up with that. No. No. Wendy might. Who's small? Wendy on a bad day. So let's let's ask who's Carlito no es way. Uh, so uh, you know a lot of American Scarface. kids. Yeah. Oh, it's Scarface. Oh my oh. God. So a lot of American kids, Star Wars was a, their big movie. Oh yeah. For me, like a lot of kids, it was Scarface. Scarface. One of my favorites. We'll watch it every single yeah. time it's Al on Pacino. TV. And my dad turned with, the first time I saw it, he showed it to me, and he turned it off right before they kill him. So he kind of left ah. it in my brain, like. Ah. 
This is the ultimate success story. Oh my God. <laughs> right, but wow. Just end the movie there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same is thing with Goodfellas. Reference? Turn it off when, uh, yeah. you know, the good times are over. Is this, is that a reference to Carlito's Way? Yeah. So to me, Scarface was my Star Wars and Carlito's Way was my Empire Strikes Back. Oh, wow. I thought wow, they, wow. Were, they were connected. You thought they were connected? These They're are the wow. ultimate immigrant stories. Oh my God. Wow. So, so uh, did, uh, Greg, were you, you were in Scarface, correct? You were one of the drug dealers. <laughs> You're in one of the drug dealers and you still have the costume. Wardrobe really wants that back, you know? You gotta look like you. <laughs> you gotta look. <laughs> well, and, and then if you think about Scarface, that's a bootleg version of Cubans, because yes. obviously Pacino's Al Pacino. not, not Cuban. Right. As, as, as and I'm, a lot of it was, they had to move from shooting in Miami to Los Angeles yeah. because the Cuban community, they just got some exteriors and that was it. The, the Cuban community was so outraged and they, they shut down the city. Yeah. Wow. They take that stuff seriously. Though. Absolutely. So, so, so you've got a superhero Coke dealer. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he, you know, immigrants always bring a chunk of their country with them. And the parable of Scarface was he brought the worst. He brought the worst with him. Right. Yeah. And that's actually there, there's rumors or it's being sort of greenlit of Scarface being remade yeah. with, as a Mexican character. Yeah. I think you might end up playing that role. <laughs> it's going to be the female Scarface, and of course they're not going to have a Mexican play it, just like Al Pacino wasn't Cuban. So I think you could be El Scarfacita. <laughs> and if you think about it, Scarface is a remake of the original. Which 19... was, yeah. yeah. Which was a, a, Italian American. A Jimmy Cagney, right? Yeah. Right. So wow. it's a bootleg so of a movie. It, was Jimmy uh, Cagney an Italian? No, he was Irish, honey. Yeah, he was Irish. There you go. Who knew? But the, the idea is dies, that goes, there, it's, a, so it's such a universal <laughs> story that it can be updated oh, yeah. every generation. Yep. And you might have to change the drug, though, right? Yeah. No, it would, still be, it would still be cocaine. Cocaine is huge now, still. It's back. What about crystal meth? Ugh. It's a, don't be Breaking hating bad. on crystal meth. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. Ah. Okay. Um, so so. Whoa whoa. We got a new face whoa. here. We got a new face here. Who is ah. this? El ultimo. So uh, a lot a lot of uh, Mexican artists are. We're all obsessed with the iconography of Mexican wrestling. Mexican yes. wrestling, so, Lucha Libre is very popular. Lucha Libre, and it, I think it means something different to different people. Okay. To me, Lucha Libre literally means the free fight. Yeah. Lucha. It's fight, Libre is free. It's free, mm -hmm. the free fight. And I think that's what all artists do. We fight to be free wow. with our work. And so I love this Oscar Wilde quote that says, give a man a mask and he will tell you the truth. Wow. And so to me, that's Lucha Libre. Great. Would you like to take off your mask now? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean your clothes, by the way. <laughs> Just to clarify that. Yeah. So, so, um, so when you, when you, how big is this painting? Uh, 48 by 36. Okay, so this is one of the, this is one, this of, the one of the big ones. ones. This is one of the big ones and it's L. I mean, did you, did you choose the size of the ones that were the most important yeah. to you? Yeah, I, I uh, my idea was three, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So it was the good was the wrestler, the bad was the devil, and then the ugly was the, the Mickey Mouse. The Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Made so many ugly things. Well, it, you know, Especially corporations in, trying to buy companies. Especially cultures. after Disney to Disney turned you yeah. down and you were getting your revenge, like Disney yeah, Warner Brothers, just boom, boom, boom. Who are you doing the virtual reality with? Uh, I, I can't say, but it's oh. a giant corporation. Ooh, giant, okay. Yeah, yeah, NDA. and it's a non-disclosure agreement. But it's going to be about Mexican wrestling. It's going to be about That's going to be oh, okay, so okay. awesome. The secret is safe with us. <laughs> If we're watching on dronebox.com <laughs> or on our, on our own website. Some big 3D show in the future. Wait, Ooh. say again. There's a rumor that LACMA is going to do a big 3D show exhibition in the future, like 2018. Isn't sculpture 3D? They're going to do a big no, sculpture. No, no, I mean like virtual. A three, 3D throughout history, like the history of 3D the history that turns of, into oh. virtual reality at the end. Oh, wow. Wow, so wow, wow. lenticular? Yes. This, this, this could be like in the mix for 2019? Something like that. You heard it here first yeah. on Modern Art Blitz. Wow, we got all the hot rumors and ooh, what's this behind me now? Yikes. Uh, so this is El Diablo. El Diablo. This is one of the giant paintings One of the, the giant paintings, and it's a Loteria card, and you guys yes. know Loteria, which is basically Mexican bingo. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's about my favorite creation myth that I heard in Mexico. Uh-oh. Uh, and it's, uh, it's awesome. It's in, in a little village. God is playing dominoes with the devil, and they're drinking mezcal. Okay. Because they're buddies, right? Yeah. Okay. 
God gets super drunk uh -oh. and passes out. The devil takes advantage of him, goes into the bedroom, and has relations with God's wife. Mrs. God. Mrs. God. Oh boy. Next morning, this is the right. devil disappeared. God's wife is pregnant. Okay. God wakes up and he knows obviously that's not his baby. And he says, because he's, he's God. I screwed up, but I will raise that baby as my own. Okay. And that's Mexico. And that's Mexico. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So, uh, our father is a devil, but God will raise us. But God will raise us. And well. it, who is Mrs. God? Is she like Mrs. Santa? I, I think so. And this, like and Santa Claus's wife? I think it's Mother Nature in that story. Mother Nature. Oh. Ah, Mother Nature. God and Mother okay. Nature. Yeah, so I, as a kid, I love that idea that we're all, wow, we all wow, have wow. the devil in us. And well, on that note, <laughs> this hour just flew by. Oh my goodness. We could, we could, we could talk another two. Um, Greg Escalante, proprietor of two galleries in Southern California, Copro Gallery at Bergamont Station in Santa Monica, and Gregorio Escalante Gallery in Chinatown, downtown Los Angeles. Right next door to Coagula Curatorial. Right next door to my gallery, Coagula Curatorial. And Ling's the, Market. The neighbors here. And um, Jorge Gutierrez, uh, obviously we now have seen a great artist, a great animator. This Good so luck much. in the future. Awesome. So and of course my lovely, <laughs> my lovely co-host, Lisa Derrick is the eye candy <laughs> sweet enough. Woo! And I'm your host, Matt Gleason. We do this every Sunday live, streaming at five o'clock on dronebox.com. Just for an hour. We are we end up these episodes end up archived on YouTube at modernartblitz.com. Uh, we do this uh, for fun. And I have no tagline. See you next week.